Hey guys, welcome to the uh, sixth cyber systemic interaction. And this time it's going to be about the health industry or specifically uh, pharmaceutic industry in the health system, their role and how maybe artificial intelligence might affect the changes of relations between um, the participants in, in the system. I'm warmly welcoming um, Jean de Manco, Anna Roberta Gagliardi, and Claudia Perillo to open the topic, the discussion. And yes, hey, the floor is yours. Today, uh, we will focus on perspective of pharmaceutical industry towards patients and uh, medical staff. Artificial intelligence uh, has the potential to connect all uh, chain uh, partners in the way that all of them uh, have benefits. Based on that, patients uh, or patients' data, pharmaceutical companies can use the patients' data to better plan uh, supply chain and reduce production time and waste of materials. Uh, patients uh, would receive better quality medicines in advance for their uh, data. Maybe also direct uh, delivery is an option. Uh, based on deliver of uh, goods based on uh, their needs. On the other side, medical staff uh, could provide the information about suitable patients for uh, clinical testing and with that shorter testing time. Uh, in return, patients would uh, receive previously approved medicine and uh, better solutions to their uh, uh, troubles. So actually, the, the role of uh, AI, the technology, is balancing uh, this relationship between all three partners. My colleagues, Roberta and Claudia, will upgrade this topic from the technical point and of view and also from the data protection uh, view. So, uh, Roberta, <laughs> it's your turn. Considering the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the year 2021 proved a challenge for health organization, we know. Uh, through the an unprecedented uh, presented, um, demand for information and answers, both uh, cl uh, clinical staff and patients have gained a better understanding of the safety of medicines. As a result, the pharmacovigilance approach has been forced to evolve, innovate, and adopt an efficient solution and leverage intelligent technologies to operate and manage patient safety and obviously detect effectively and efficiently. Advanced technologies such as uh, we see optical ca uh, character recognition, robotic process, aut automation, cognitive machine learning, chatbot, uh, blockchain technology uh, are being uh, used to automate various activities in pharmacovigilance domain. In specific, in particular, uh, optical, optical character recognition is a technology that is becoming increasingly important in drug safety operations and it, it converts handwritten and typed text into machine-readable formats. Optical, optical character recognition speeds up data collection and reduces the risk of human error by eliminating the need for, for manual transcription. Uh, this te technology, in fact, is critical in converting unstructured clinical notes into structured data, improving, improve, improving quality assessment and, obviously, better patient outcomes. The second, uh, the use of uh, rule-based robotic process automation is another uh, significant uh, advance, advancement. In fact, uh, this tool automate automated, yes, the execution of repetitive tasks, saving performance uh, um, ph uh, pharmacovigilance professionals valuable time. Uh, this tool, uh, this technology, uh, process automation increases efficiency and reduces the risk of manual error by automating data uh, entry, report generation, and basic analytical tasks. The third, uh, cognitive machine learning, is an effective tool in uh, um, artificial intelligence powered by drug safety operation. 
uh, machine learning algorithms uh, can identify patterns and relationship in massive amounts of data, allowing for more accurate predictions and risk assessment. Cognitive machine learning algorithms improve their performance over time through the continuous learning and adaption, providing helpful information on a diverse event monitoring and drug safety. Uh, this technology can process uh, and analyze structure, structured and unstructured data, is very important, this point, uh, such as medical records, social media posts, documents, and other relevant sources. Uh, chatbots based on artificial intelligence have also found a place in pharmacovigilance. These uh, conversational interfaces can interact with users uh, to provide information and help with drug safety question um, about adverse event reporting and uh, page, uh, even patient education also. Uh, chatbots uh, help pharmacovigilance professional by triaging questions, providing preliminary, preliminary answers, and directing users to relevant resources. In addition, last but not least, the blockchain technology's potential in the pharmacovigilance field is being investigated. investigated. It's the decentralized and Im immutable nature. Uh, this, this, techno this technology, the blockchain, provides great, greater security and integrity in data management. Uh, pharmacovigilance uh, professional can use blockchain to ensure uh, transparency and traceability. Ongoing developments are paving the way for more standardized and simplified the, the data entry processes. The integration and the interoperability of various artificial intelligence technologies allow for the development of a robust and efficient pharmacovigilance system. The data entry of the individual, individual case, uh, case safety report, for example, into a pharmacovigilance system can be significantly uh, simplified by combining uh, the, the tool that I explain. Uh, thus, by, uh, by maximizing the potential of artificial intelligence, we can foster innovation, improve patient safety, and ensure that drug safety practice continue to evolve in the ever-changing world of healthcare. Thank you, Anna Roberta. Claudia? Yes. Welcome, Claudia. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. As my colleague uh, has said, artificial intelligence together with uh, machine learning uh, could benefit uh, the pharmaceutical industry in many different ways, both on the producer side uh, with a shortening uh, of the uh, supply chain operation and the go-to-market period, uh, on the pharmacovigilance side uh, with uh, uh, an improvement of data collection uh, and uh, studies for the uh, post-market uh, and post-market studies. Uh, and also uh, these new technologies allow us to customize products uh, on the patient's feedback. And this is possible because uh, we have uh, a network of different actors that interact when we use artificial intelligence. We have the patient, he is the uh, base of our processes. So we have the patient, we have the physician, the doctors, uh, we have the pharmaceutical industry, and we have also the healthcare national uh, service. Uh, when we use such technologies, uh, what is produced? There is a huge amount of data, which are produced, stored, and analyzed. Uh, uh, due to the, the technologies applied uh, to the pharmaceutical industries. With the use of these technologies, uh, the use of artificial intelligence uh, and together with machine learning, uh, we have a lot of issues related to data because uh, this revolution uh, is 
uh, that are driven the revolution of the pharmaceutical industries through uh, these new technologies. Indeed, uh, at first, uh, we have the issue of uh, data collection. So one crucial factor is that artificial intelligence is able to collect every kind of data. But uh, what data are good for us to be used? What data are good for the doctor? What data are good for the pharmaceutical industry? So it's not only about the quantity of the data, but also the quality. So how is it possible to select uh, which data are better for uh, data, data collection and then data analysis? Then together with the data collection, the privacy issue arises because we collect data about the patient, which is a human being. So, and also we are talking about data in the healthcare ecosystem. And we know that the privacy issue is a key problem in, uh, in this industry. Indeed, uh, the access to patient medical data is necessary to use artificial intelligence and to analyze uh, the therapeutic plan, the, drugs used and so on. Uh, but it's also important to protect uh, the individual's uh, information. Uh, so ways to assure the privacy should be identified. We know that today we have in Europe the GDPR, but perhaps with artificial intelligence is not sufficient. So which are the next frontiers uh, for the privacy issue with, uh, with artificial intelligence? Going on with the issue, we have also the issue of data storage and management because we produce data, we overcome the problem of the privacy, and then we come to the storage and the management of this data because it's not only putting together a huge amount of results, but uh, it's all about understand, understanding uh, which information we want to take from data, how to organi organize this data. And we have different interests because on the one side, pharmaceutical industry wants to better its products offering. On the other side, we have the healthcare national services and the doctors, which has got the final aim of the of people health. Then we have also the problem of data sharing because in order to use artificial intelligence, these different actors has to share data uh, with each other. All these problems, uh, we may say, that are related to one core problem, the ownership of the data. Uh, why this is a core problem? Because the power in the market lays in the ownership of the data. If there are different market dynamics, uh, if the owner of uh, data used through artificial intelligence uh, power in the market, the market dynamics are different. If the ownership is of the industry is different, uh, if it's from the healthcare national service. Why? Because there are different interests and uh, uh, because in this case, uh, data means power, uh, we may say. So, the last question uh, that I want to address, uh, together with the ownership uh, of the data, is related to platforms, um, because now there is no regulation uh, about uh, who is the owner of this data. And perhaps the new frontier will be the definition uh, of a procedure or something like that uh, uh, about the ownership of the data. And my question is, uh, who is better to be the owner of that data? The other question is related to platform, because we know that platform and network are providing uh, to be are proving to be very useful for all the different stakeholders, uh, assuring high quality of information and the engagement of, of different actors. Uh, and if we should imagine uh, the future evolution uh, of uh, ecosystems and healthcare is an ecosystem, we imagine it as platform based and uh, data driven. So digital technologies such as artificial intelligence uh, uh, should be uh, driven through uh, platforms. And also here, how to manage platforms, how to rule 
platforms, how to uh, make different actors to interact uh, to platform. So this is our, these are the questions that I try to give you, to ask you about data and artificial intelligence, hoping that some of you can uh, help us uh, in definition of different answers. Jean, uh, Claudia, Anna, Roberta, perfect. I think you opened so many questions. And I think the healthcare system is basically an example of how this artificial intelligence uh, combined with unlimited access to data is really going to change the relationship between uh, people, organizations, and the regulators. Uh, I can see, uh, Claudia, that you were the only one mentioning a healthcare national service as a, in its role as a regulator. That, that might be interesting. But before doing that, um, I would ask the participants to have any comments, feedbacks, reflections, maybe Francesco. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm sorry if I have the, my cam is turned off, but I am in movement as ever, but uh, it's my pleasure to stay here. As first step, I want to give my congrats to all the three participants because the, the work is really relevant a lot of questions as Igor has anticipated and the topic it's really relevant for for me basically uh, I think that uh, here there is one of the elements that Claudia has uh, anticipated that it's relevant on which uh, to reflect that is related to the cognitive value of the uh, information because basically uh, not all the information are useful. And now we are in a phase in which uh, artificial intelligence from one side and uh, uh, digitalization process from the other side are um, creating a sort of a loop in which uh, information are produced, but they are not uh, effectively used because not all uh, the actor are able to understand this information and are able to take advantages from this information. So basically from a systems point of view, I think that the real question is related to the real value of the information and to the opportunity to discuss about a subjective value of the information that change according to the kind of opposition and kind of actor that uh, by time by time uh, we take in consideration. Uh, for example, with reference to the healthcare sector, it's clear that the uh, data about previous uh, health status of patients are relevant for the doctor, can be useful for pharmaceutical company, but uh, perhaps are not really useful for health structure. They can be used in a sort of uh, summarized way in order to understand on which from policy uh, government point of view in order to understand how to invest money, public money or also private money, it depends by the kind of healthcare system, but they are, it's not really useful to have detailed data. And this is one of the main problems. I think that now with the artificial intelligence and uh, the opportunity offered by the digitalization, we, uh, or better, technical scientists are on the way to identify new kind of filters for the information. But basically, they are still working on the technical point of view. So on the quantitative dimension and not on the qualitative dimension. According to this, it could be useful, for example, to go in depth with the proposal uh, uh, that we have listened today, uh, trying to investigate what are the perception of the actor respect to information, what are the key, the kind of information that each category of actor use respect to the, the different process and how each actor can change its role during the process because uh, this is another relevant point that can support the, for example, the study about the collaboration, the participation, the stakeholder engagement and so on. So basically my congrats as ever, I have put a lot of um, element uh, in, in the field. I'm sorry for this, but the healthcare systems, I think that it's a relevant topic on which systems uh, scientists and researchers can uh, work, should work hard in the next period.
Yes. It's also very interesting the passage uh, uh, through the information uh, variety model. So the information varieties of each different actor and uh, also the perception of actors. So thank you, Francesco. Thank you to you, Claudia. Thank you. Well, I think I think Francesco opened the, the, the very important point, but we need to ask ourselves uh, who has the capacity to deal okay. with data and what are these capacities and how we expect them to develop. For instance, if we, we if we have the players, uh, the patients, right. the the medical organizations, the uh, pharmaceutical industry and the healthcare national service okay if we can identify these uh, four groups who has the the basically the capacity to manage with this overload of data uh, i i can clearly see that the patients by themselves do not have that power that means that if if the process is not regulated uh, they will deteriorate their capacity to well self-medicate to to take their own decisions about how to how to how to be active part of the system so this is this is a risk and it's a clear risk uh on the other hand the who has the best organizations and also resources uh, i do not believe that this is the healthcare national service i think claudia mentioned that you know they use aggregated data as a statistics and that's it. So on on a, on a personal uh, level of data, meaning health data about a singular patient, they don't have that. Is it the the health organizations? Uh, uh, the, actually, there is the issue of uh, electronic medical uh, uh, file, uh, but the reason uh, I also cited the healthcare national service is for what you are saying uh, right now so who should be the regulator of the infrastructure of this amount of data should it be one of the actors involved so the patient the doctor the factories or should it be a higher level regulator that provide different kind of data to different kind of actors so I think that, as you are saying, the issue is that uh, who, sh who is able to manage, to understand uh, which data, who is able to deal with this data. So the, the reason why I put uh, the healthcare national services there is because one of the question uh, perhaps is, is the healthcare uh, national service able to regulate uh, this uh, data sharing, this data collection, and so on, or should it be a different regulator, a different actor, uh, perhaps a higher level uh, actor? I, I I don't know. And or, or this it is be one of the questions. Yeah. Distributed, quite tough. So, but currently, currently the data is stored in medical files, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, we is industry interested in these medical files and how would they use it because the industry has the capacity to actually deal with the data yeah John, what do you think mm, i think that on some cases uh, they're already sharing this data for example in cell therapies when the um, well, pharmaceutical companies are uh, producing the specific individual um, medicines but i think that the ownership uh, of data um, has to be on individual and then the, um, some public organization should protect the interest of should protect the public interest of all individuals together so uh, to establish rule sets which uh, the industry and the health system and the, the patients must obey but this rule set is usually as rigid as the, the national health center institutions are basically you know the dynamics of how data changes how interactions with data changes are much faster than the regulations so basically they are lagging and that that has two results one result is it 
that the data is not being shared or the data is being shared uh, beyond the organized channels of sharing data collected from the patients. How to deal with that? How to, how to make the, the dynamics of the regulation much faster? It is needed. It is needed to just keep up with the with the system. Okay, but let's 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 hear from from uh, maybe some other points. Uh, Yingji, hey, are you here? Oh uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank for the three presenters. I think they raised some of our, uh, interesting questions, and uh, artificial intelligence definitely would have significant potential in healthcare industry. I think that is one of the major application areas for AI. And there are some technical issues like uh, how do we deal with the uncertainty in data, how do we deal with those uh, information that is poor information that is typically in, exists in the medical field. And that is research is going on and uh, it's one of the topics that we are working on. And from my experience, I think more Importantly, the, the challenge that is how do we connect data with the uh, use of the data? That is a very important issue, and that is what is raised by today, today's presentation. I think, uh, what is the ownership of the data and who owns it and who can use it? In the ideal world, for uh, research in AI, if we can share all the medical data and health data all together throughout the whole world. That would make the AI play the best its capacity. But it, uh, certainly we have the issue of privacy. And for certainly we have the issue of uh, data protection. And how can we balance these two? That is a big challenge in this field. I think uh, for the continual AI development, how to deal with the data usage with the data ownership, that is the key. At the moment, if you want to uh, do something about it, then you have to pass very strict uh, data protection at different kind of requirements. In it, the, the fact proves that the hardest part in this kind of research is data. So if you want to get data about human health, that is the most sensitive data, and you have to pass the strict uh, uh, procedure to get it. And that makes the whole thing much more complicated. I think that is one thing that slow down the whole process. So that that might be something that we have to deal with. And uh, it's a complex issue. It's not only a technical issue. It's more associated with social science and uh, many other areas as well. Thank you, Yingji. Now, maybe let, let's look at the drivers in, in the system. AI offers many business opportunities one of them is basically cuts the middleman because right now for selling the pharmaceuticals you know this is being done from uh, through drug stores and the way of doing that is people get a recipe or decide to buy medicines go to the pharmacy and they and they buy them right now uh this is done because pharmaceutical industry is basically producing the pharmaceutical on the ball. They assess how much it's going, it should be produced and they produce it, but they do this in large charges. Uh, do you think AI can change the, the approach of basically the delivery of uh, medicines? Do you, need, do you think that the, the technology can change the way the medicines are being distributed? To the patients because right now the industry and the patients don't have a direct link they have a middleman do you think you can reach patients directly is it and i don't know is this a business opportunity or how would you call that in my, in my opinion uh, is an opportunity but the problem is that uh, the stakeholders all stakeholders, all actors, uh, so clinical staff, uh, um, patients, caregiver, um, and so on, are uh, are a poor poor uh, background in about the about the digital technologies and uh, the um, the importance of the output of the out 
outcome that these technology have, they don't uh, manage in uh, a, in a good way. And in my opinion, is the for the, the 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 big problem is the background, is the um, the education, is the digital technology the technologies education. In fact, uh, I am a clinical engineer. And uh, uh, in uh, this way, for this reason, uh, I work also with the various uh, healthcare structure. And yet today, uh, after uh, three, four uh, years uh, of the outbreak of COVID-19, uh, I, I see uh, an, an inappropriate uh, use of the digital technologies by, in particular, clinical staff. And uh, in my opinion, uh, this is the, the big problem. Jean, Claudia? Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity because uh, we all have these smart devices that are measuring uh, all our personal data. And uh, I think if this data is, especially for, um, for companies, they don't need specific data about individual. They just need the, the correctly coded data, the numbers, and then based on this, they can plan their, their, their demands and uh, production. You would use this data for production planning? Actually, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you knew, I don't know, for instance, what's the temperature of people around, you, you, you could assess how much of the population is actually sick and try to figure out that? Yeah, yeah but for, for, for specific uh, cases, the, uh, they can be in the system like approval of your doctor or mm. for uh, for some specific diseases. Yeah. Yeah. What about going from sick people to basically healthy people who can be targeted to keep up their lifestyle? And I'm I'm talking about the business opportunities from from the industry perspective because this is what we're doing here today expanding the pharmaceutics, not only for the people who need treatment, but for preventive uh, medicines, uh, products, uh, basically ensuring healthy lifestyle, uh, monitoring that healthy lifestyle, and monitoring the, I don't know, can you monitor the, no, I will not, I will not go into how many calories have you spent uh, how, uh, uh, what is your rate of fat in the body, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And this can be mitigated with, with uh, some pharmaceutics products, right? Yeah, also some so these uh, vitamin supplements and something like this. Okay. Okay. Now, <laughs> discussing all these, all these, I think, it, it feels like the, the, the patients are in the mm, always squeezed in the corner of being more and more passive, right? Being delivered by the industry, being uh, treated by the health system, and they're just there and, and wait for something for them to happen up. Uh, how to activate them? Actually... I think that uh, this is uh, how artificial intelligence could better in the information. So the patient can give its feedback about its treatment, uh, activating the process of data sharing. Because nowadays when someone, uh, his ill, uh, wants to communicate to the doctors the problem, uh, but perhaps uh, having a wearable, a smart device, uh, that it's able with machine learning and artificial intelligence to collect and analyze data. The patient can send the data to the doctor, to the uh, pharmacist, uh, to the industry and so on. And so could be more active uh, in the data sharing. So there is the wearable, the device that is able to, data co uh, to collect data and the patient uh, uh, can share the data. But the, issue as uh, Roberta said uh, is there the is, is the patient literacy so the patient should understand the relevance of sharing this data so it's a change of perspective it's also a literacy of different actors a training of the different actors in the system it's a revolution so we have to uh, re-engineerize 
each different part of the process. But this this basically excludes really a large portions of uh, of the population, right? Elderly Why? who are not capable of using the devices or sharing data don't even understand the concept of what they are doing. Youngerly, basically, the, the 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 ones who are not literate yet. So it, it, it's it's hard to complicate things for a patient, right? Yes and no. Why? Because, for example, for the elderly, uh, in order to effectively activate uh, therapeutic plants, uh, as is also reported in literature, the uh, role of caregivers uh, is very important uh, also for the therapy adherence. So perhaps the elderly that is not able to use devices uh, could be helped by different factors. So we uh, select uh, just the most relevant factors but there is an ecosystem of a multiple different of multiple different actors then uh, we should also take uh, into account that the elderly are becoming more and more digitalized and digital um, literate so perhaps uh, in a few years the problem of the uh, lack of capabilities by the elderly will be a little bit uh, overcome. For the youngest, uh, perhaps uh, the programs uh, of uh, citizen uh, training uh, should be relevant. So to, to activate all this process, as you have said, it's very tough. It, 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 it is. There are, there are a lot of blockers uh, because of habits, because of the structural uh, problems, uh, because of the systemic interaction uh, carried out right now in uh, the healthcare ecosystem. And so to overcome the actual blockers, uh, a reconfiguration of the system should be done, uh, taking into account that this ecosystem uh, will be as soon as possible uh, data-driven. Mm -hmm. According to me, my studies, <laughs> what I've read in literature and so on. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, who, Sandra? Yes, Igor. Let's, do you have so, any comment? Any yeah, suggestions? Maybe. maybe. Uh, hello to everybody. Thank you, Igor, for organizing this session of the CSI, and thank you very much to Roberta, to Claudia, to Jean for uh, for your presentation. No, I was just wondering. Uh, regarding this issue of data ownership, uh, how this could relate uh, to the discussion we had during WASC 2017, because at that time, Christian Pristipino from Rome delivered a keynote about uh, precision medicine and systems medicine, and, and systems medicine understood as a more personalized model of healthcare. No? Maybe you can say something, what you think about this uh, possibility of uh, using uh, artificial intelligence uh, towards this model of healthcare of systems medicine. I don't, I don't know if, I, if my point is clear, but I, I think that uh, this relates to this uh, attempt at least uh, to achieve a, a, a systems medicine. No? I think you opened two points. And that is uh, data ownership and systems medicine, mm -hmm. which is the, the one who owns the data, but not only the data, also the results of the data, the information, right? Mm -hmm. And if, if, for instance, industry decides to collect data about the patient, should the patient be actually aware of that? Being... That's a good question. I think they should. Should they have access to their medical data I think they should. It's their data, right? You were discussing the the uh, the data ownership, and the, the other one is the the the, the systemic uh, management of data. And, and I think only if if the patient first of all has the data, has access to the data, and then understands the data, he can actively participate in the in the treatment. And and this is, I think, one of the very in, in, important parts of the systems approach toward uh, healing uh, processes, right? By providing uh, the, the patient the capacity 
to to understand data on by himself to, to understand his situation he can participate in in the in the healing process what am i am i throwing a low ball here sandra no i don't know Igor, uh, because uh, i think which is the purpose of the system which is the, the which purpose. is the, why do we have the health system right yeah. so yeah or, or or in other words how to improve the health system to which extent uh, all this discussion, all this issue of using data and data ownership uh, can be of value to, to improve the health system or not? Well, that is another issue. What does it mean to improve? <laughs> from which perspective? <laughs> always, always from the perspective of the patient. It, absolutely, it should be, right? Perhaps the system, uh, the, the, the healthcare national system should aggregate uh, what, what, if I will remember, Pristipino talks about an holistic medicine uh, to understand all the problem uh, of a patient uh, because different practitioners uh, has got different uh, specialization. Mm -hmm. So the problem is that, for example, I treat you just for one pathology. So holistic medicine is necessary to treat the patient in the whole. And so the national healthcare uh, system uh, could be the regulator of the infrastructure, could be the aggregator of different practitioners, could be the aggregator of different actors, could be the actors in charge of uh, made the patient active. Uh, I think that uh, this is a good question. Mm -hmm. Regulates uh, who drive uh, this evolution. Uh, and I don't know if factories, uh, pharmaceutical factories, firms, could be uh, could be the regulator. I don't know if it could no. be the healthcare national service or someone else. So mm -hmm. the role no. of the system is, is, should be also studied. Who who is interested in in having in having the the patient holistically uh, basically managed and. And basically, in the effect, in the end effect, not being ill but active parts of the society. Who, 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 whose desire is it genuinely? The the doctor that uh, should pay for the treatment. So, for example, for the Italian case, the healthcare national service or the government, the central government, the doctor due to its mission. <laughs> Of, yeah, but uh, the doctors are health, uh... specialized, right? Yes. So if you want to have a, uh, if you want to have a, a holistic treatment, you need to have a series of doctors, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this is this or is. Using, not... Or using artificial intelligence to integrate all this information. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. artificial intelligence is basically supporting an yes. organization. Now, who is that? So it's a national health system? But also the clinical governance of each, each, uh, each, um, each, each healthcare structure, in my opinion. Because but it's, uh, the, 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 the level, it's not enough. Because, for example, if I'm treated in two different structures, how hmm. to integrate information from the two different structures? I think this is the point made by Sandro. So we, we, are, we are combining the interest, the ownership, the capacity and the interest who wants who wants to who wants to do that right mm -hmm. and um what what's what's the interest of the industry because today we are talking about industry because the next time i do hope that we will go to the uh, health uh, uh, organizations right okay yeah and, and it's going to be a very interesting topic again <laughs> Bloody hell, this is going to be good. Uh, Jean, what are the interests of and I will I will I will be specific, right? Not of the business industry, but of the sustainable business industry, right? Yeah. Can, the, can yeah. the industry rethink themselves or is it a mission impossible? Is is the uh, is this just the buzzword, the sustainability? Or uh, are we playing with uh, open cards? I think in the end, there or the, all the companies are 
being created for uh, money and uh, profit. Yeah. So the, the the profit is the incentive, right? Maybe uh, maybe if um, if we change the the organization structure that they have to to uh, um, reinvest the money back to the healthcare system. Yeah, well, the profit. But, yeah. yeah, but the, the the issue is, you know, out of all the actors, the only one who is really good organized is the industry, right? Yeah, because I, they. I don't know if we can say that the health uh, organizations are well organized. We can definitely say that patients have the organizational power. Uh, so you you have the strength of being well organized, focused, and in, in achieving a goal. The, the the only thing is that the goal is not really well aligned with with other partners in the ecosystem. How to mitigate that? I think for today this is this might be the the, the crucial question. How to make industry a more a partner which you can rely that it will not follow their own interests but the interest of the the people who we are all here about and that's that's the patients right for instance when when we spoke about sharing the what i know about the patient with the patient how do you feel about that yeah i i agree um maybe maybe the government should, should try with some long-term contracts with uh, companies maybe also this is an option i don't know mm -hmm. so to operalize the the need well you know the example of usa is quite evident right in usa the the prices of the medicaments are going through the roof yeah Be any any more any more comments because right now we are one hour is over it was an extremely fast hour so maybe maybe there's a time for another feedback or something in this case i would like to thank john claudia and anna roberta for putting an extremely good discussion and again we didn't find any answers but I think we illuminated the, the, the issue a little bit better just for us to to think better about it. And yes, again, sorry for not providing the silver bullet, but happy to to, to make you think if we did that. Uh, the next time, mm -hmm. it's going to be end of October. Mm -hmm. uh, the exact dates will be published in LinkedIn and on the web page and uh, hopefully sends via email and well looking forward to see you there and enjoy the day thank you igor thank you, thank you. okay ciao thank you to all bye thank, thank you, you to everyone bye.